Do you like the Matrix? Do you like socially awkward conversations? Do you like characters that are completely out of their minds? <laughs> <laughs> that say and do stuff that nowadays will end them in jail. Would you like to be put in jail? Do you like family issues? Your sibling. Siblings. Family. Family. Dad. Mom. My sister. Sister. Brothers. Brother. 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 And more importantly, do you like dual wielding guns like a complete badass in a game that gives you enough ammunition to supply a small army? Well, then Resident Evil Code Veronica is the game for you. So, if you're new to Resident Evil, here's a loosely summary of what happened until now. On the first game, a team was sent to investigate some murders in the forest. That team disappears, so they send another one. You play as Joe or Chris, well, not buff Chris yet, normal Chris, and they find a mansion infested with zombies. They suffer heavy casualties and return to the police station to report. What Joe did in Resident Evil 3 is not important, we'll get to that. And Chris went to investigate an umbrella facility in Paris and refused to tell anyone what he was doing. And if you know his sister like he does, us, you know this is a problem. Claire, like her brother, is not a big fan of waiting. Hurry! So she goes to Raccoon City to look for him and to be in the second game alongside Leon. Fine. After they meet, they find out the city is infested with zombies. Well, the real one this time. She finds out about Chris's trip and after doing some babysitting. Sherry, 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 Sherry. She goes after him in France all by herself. Yeah, like her brother. Claire is not a big fan of thinking. Thankfully, she's a Redfield and Redfields are OP. She arrives in France and Umbrella does the logical thing. He starts a little warfare in the middle of Paris to stop one single woman. She kills a bunch of people due to lag, gets captured, and you wake up in the Rockford Island in the South Pacific Ocean. Can we start playing now? <laughs> This prison's been taken over. The troops have been wiped out. What are you saying? You're free to leave the complex. But you may as well know you have no chance of getting off this island. And what about you? What are you going to do? Don't worry about me. This is Rodrigo, the guy who brought us here. He's wounded and needs hemostatic medicine. We take a mental note of that, grab the ammo and the herb inside a cell, and we're off to explore the island. <laughs> This game, the knife is just fantastic. You can slash your way through most enemies, but I won't be showing you that, aside from one exception. On the last episode, I used an infinite weapon to show you how to get around a game with ammo to spare, but Code Veronica has a lot of ammunition, and I don't want to extend this game longer than I should, because this is the longest classic style Resident Evil game. Okay, if they bite you here, don't worry, just mash the D-pad to escape. Wait, wait, don't shoot! Uh, sorry about that little misunderstanding, but I thought you were another one of those monsters. Shut up! This, this is Steve. He's annoying, but trust me, there's a reason for that. I don't want you following me, lady. He'll only slow me down. Oh, the M93R. I don't know a lot about guns. We used to call all the RE pistols Berettas. You see this Glock? It's definitely a Beretta. But of all handguns, you know, basic pistols, 9mm, the ones you start the game with. This is one of my favorites in the entire series, alongside with the Red 9 in Resident Evil 4. For now, it does its job, but later this thing will become a beast. Don't be afraid to use this pistol to shoot stuff. You won't lose your save file because you ran out of ammunition for your handgun. The only ones that should pay attention are the more powerful guns. You see that? You want that. Those are Calico's M100Ps. As a proud owner of a Calico CAT myself, I think having twice of them is always nice. This is one of those weird percentage guns on Resident Evil. Every shot drains 1%, and since Claire always shoots them both at the same time, that's 200 bullets. I don't know for sure, but I think that's about the same damage as 200 rounds of the M93R. So starting pretty loaded. I save it someone to get out of tight situations and to deal with dogs. And on my first use of this weapon, you already see the main problem with dual wielding stuff. They target two enemies at once. 
and this is rarely useful. It's more of a problem than anything. You have to press the change target button that in any other situation you know will change your target, but here it will stay on the same target and use both guns on it, which is what you wanted in the first place. You see, now that's a smart way to use the same auto over and over, having them on uniform. Other entries in this series also did that, but I think in Cold Veronica, all zombies are in some sort of uniform. Or naked. Chris Redfield. What are you doing here? Is he a relative of yours or something? You mean my brother? Ah. Your siblings. Well, it seems your brother is under surveillance by Umbrella. What? Got to contact Leon and tell him to let my brother know he's being monitored. Why don't you send your brother the coordinates and ask him to come help? Thanks. I'll do that. There's no way he could get here, even if he is your brother. Yes, he can. I'm sure of it. He won't come. You'll just end up disappointed if you rely on others. Believe me, I know. What was that all about? What was that all about? Claire saying this like she was an awkward as well. They sound like children. Not even your brother can save us. Yes, you can. Shut up. Oh, not even your bro <laughs> That's apparently Steve's voice. <laughs> what do I do with my life? Please deposit any metallic items you have in the security box. See, this is a good puzzle. You have to get this medallion out of this building, but you can't get past the metal detector, so we have to find a way to use this duplicator. The extra tension here is also a nice touch, because you're forced to leave all your weapons at the door, and you have the zombies walking around and banging at the windows, and you know that eventually they'll make their way through. But if we are smart, we won't need to deal with them. For now, just leave the medallion at the duplicator, and raise this lever and move on. You know, I haven't seen a Doberman in almost 10 years. Where did they go? They were everywhere. Dogs in this game are quite simple, just don't use projectile weapons on them. There's a high chance of you missing your shot. Can you just run away from them? Maybe, if you know what you're doing. But on Code Veronica, it's safer to shoot stuff. On other Resident Evil games, it's way easier to run around enemies, but not on this one. Also, correct me if I'm wrong, but I think this is the first Resident Evil you can check objects in 3D. Well, maybe, maybe Nemesis. I, I don't know, fuck it. See the zombies I told you about? If you copy the medallion now, we'll be in trouble and without any means to defend ourselves. But if we trigger the shutters, we can make as much noise as we need to. Nice. Okay, but how we get these items out of here? Later, there's a blocked door in the back. And by the way, don't leave the empty extinguisher behind. Trust me. Now, one more thing before leaving. Trigger the shutters again on your way out. Another cool thing is how long you have to play before you have access to the item box. I like the tension on the first part of Resident Evil 2, where you're walking around an infested city, then you make to the RPD, and then, only then, you find your first item box. By hiding the box until now, this game manages to create a good sense of struggle as well. And don't worry about ink rainbows, I cannot imagine how much you have to fool around to run out of these things. I'm also not going for an S rank because I'll do tons of save in case I need to go back and get more footage, and I'll take my time with enemies, but I'll do pretty much everything you need to get an S rank, aside from the saves and the required time. Okay, most Resident Evil games I play with auto aim off. I like the extra tension of having to aim your shots and having to deal with accuracy and etc. and the pain of wasting precious ammo. But here's the thing, on other Resident Evils, you can always hear your enemies. Keeping your ears sharp is one thing that will keep you from being jumped by a hunter, but on Code Veronica they simply don't care and hide zombies. You see me taking tiny steps until I trigger the next enemy, or I'll just keep aiming trying to find out if there's something out there. I might be wrong, but on previous Resident Evils aside from the very first one, the only silent zombies were the ones on the ground, but here they set traps for you. Ah! You think I'm playing? And that's more of an annoyance than a challenge. If you're making the player do this to find out if they can move on or not, you're not doing your game a favor.
These are the Ashford Swims. You learn from reading the files they are psychopaths, borderline incestuous, and borderline Nazis. You genetically inferior siblings. Speaking of which, we walk inside this room and see a steering wheel. We grab it because why the hell not? Then we see a pair of gold lugers. Of course we grab them, but we start being microwaved alive. So what would any normal human being do in this situation? Put them back, right? But no, that's not how Steve rolls. Yeah! Help me! Steve decides to scream for help on an island where everyone but Claire wants him dead. And what happens if you don't help him? He dies, of course he does. He ain't putting them back. Oh, I need those. I found it, not keeping it. I swear to you, there's a reason for this behavior. Oh, here's a cool thing. If you equip the lighter, the bats won't attack you, so you don't have to waste ammo with them. Okay, Resident Evil games don't have a right way to play it. You do what's best for you. I'm not saying that you should play like me. I'm not a pro. I'm just showing you how I get to the end of this game with a lot of self despair. I won't walk you through everything, but some parts I'll tell you the order I do stuff because this game has a lot of walking around if you don't know what you're doing. And I'm surprised there are still a lot of people that think this game is too difficult. There's plenty of ammunition for you to kill everything on this game and a lot of healing items as well. You just have to know how and when to use them. Oh, and grab the case. Redfield! How dare you interfere with my operation! On the first Resident Evil, we could forgive the bad voice acting, but here's like it's done on purpose. I am Alfred Ashford, commander of this base. Oh? You must be one of Umbrella's lower level officers if you're in command of a backwater base like this one. Oh, and don't worry about this part. We're just going to the airport to grab the side packs and this card. Oh, come on, these things have to be rigged. <laughs> Wait, you can throw them over this barrier. I had no idea this was possible. On this game, I don't carry heli items with me. I usually heal the safe room, but you have a lot of space if you're feeling insecure you can walk around with a healing item. After playing Resident Evil 1 remake with Chris, I never did that again. Now for the worm. How do we kill it? We don't. That's it. Ok, you're probably noticing a pattern here, if I have nothing to gain by killing an optional boss, I won't kill it. It's easy to avoid a worm anyway, just run. Yeah, boy. The bowgun. Oh, the bowgun. It's slightly weaker than the M93R. It's a projectile weapon, so it's pretty much out of question for fast moving enemies. And it's hard to hit things on the ground with all those disadvantages. It's a bad weapon, right? No, there's a ton of ammo for it. You don't have to reload it. It shoots fast. And soon you have access to one of the, if not the best ammunition type in this game explosive arrows. Since it's normal ammunition, it's so similar to the M93R in terms of damage. I alternate between them while I collect ammo for the other one that's resting on the item box. At this point, you probably still have some M100P rounds left. You can hit scan enemy with them and use the bow on the slower ones. I'm fast as fuck, boy! That, that was a turbo zombie. Sometimes enemies can go turbo. And thank god they die quick on this game, if not, Code Veronica will have one of the most OP zombies in the entire series. You can print a map here. I never did this before. There's even a blinking light indicating interaction. What a fucking idiot. Oh! Hemostatic medicine. How convenient. <laughs> See that rat? That's the IJ. This rat follows you throughout the game while writing a diary. Yes, writing a diary. Don't believe me? Just wait and see. <laughs> Welcome, Claire. Consider the area you are in a special playground. Do not disappoint me by dying too soon. <laughs> the Bender Snatchers. Oh, the Bender Snatchers. They're basically jelly tyrants. They won't hit you from a distance if you keep moving. You deal with them differently from a hunter or a laker. It's safe to use projectile weapons of them as long as you shoot slowly, because they can travel great distances in one... I kill them with two or three explosive arrows. <laughs> they kind of make up their mind as they go. Ah, okay, I'll, I'll die with two this time. 
That felt good. This is why you need me. What? This is why you ever. Here, take these in exchange for your Lugers. <laughs> okay, okay. Now this is my kind of weapon. All right. Huh? <laughs> hey, this thing's empty. You cheated me. Up there, plenty of ammo just for you. Give me a boost and I'll get it for you. All right, all right. Oh, come on, Steve. That's not how you give someone a boost. Ow! My back! You're heavier than you look. You're heavier than you look? She's 15 kilos, dude. That's a sack of cement. Okay, I'm sorry, but Brazilians can't see something that's about 15 kilos and not point out the weight's about a sack of cement. Happy now? What? Okay, let's do it! Wait here, Claire! Time to test out my new toy! See more dual wielding weapons. Why there's a ton of them here and not on other Resident Evil games? I think into 6 maybe? Let me take you to 1999 and the years that followed. I can't understate how much the Matrix changed everything. From movies to games to phones to clothing, we saw people wearing coats. In Brazil, although the usage of two guns was present in various types of media prior to the movie's launch, The Matrix not only took inspiration on those, but also was responsible for making it even more popular. Almost obligatory. And suddenly scenes like this, or this, where characters show unhuman dexterity, were all over the place. And complex shots that took a lot of work to put together in movies are now being easily recreated in games, because you don't need 100 cameras to pull that off. There's no physical camera. And you can freeze time at any point. Code Veronica X have even more outlandish cutscenes. As an avid fan of the Matrix series, I do enjoy these kinds of interactions, especially if they're well choreographed. But looking back now at the replacement on this particular game, it feels a little out of place. My god, I'm rambling like an old man. Then I haven't watched the new Matrix movie, should I? I look forward for the sections where you play as other characters in Resident Evil games. Carlos in Resident Evil 3, Ashley in 4, and Sherry in Resident Evil 2 Remake are good examples. But this gives you no objective, you don't have to retrieve some medicine, you don't have to skip a tight situation, just move forward. And if you go back, Claire just verbally abuses you. Do you want me to take care of this for you, little boy? Some of you like that, don't you, little fricks? Steve! What were you doing here? Who brought you here and where is your family? I don't want to talk about it! Claire, are you okay? No! What's wrong, Steve? Shoot him! Wait! I... I can't! Steve! No! Ah. Ah. Father! Ah. Anyone that played the Fallout series know that's not how these things usually go. Dad... used to work for Umbrella. Tried to steal information. Mom was killed. And we were sent here. Oh, Steve. Oh, don't you dare oh Steve us now. You were the one with you. Where's your family? You see the indigo plate? What's fun about this item is that it opens two doors, but it's gone from our inventory upon use. So we have to fight another. You can explore things here or go back and explore the prison part. I just go back to the training facility and grab the grenade launcher. I always like this gun. It's over gimmicked. Yes, but that's why I like it. Just have to get the hang of each ammo type before using them on a larger scale. But once you do, you're golden. 
nem te apresenta. These are the albinoids. They're pretty cute little things. The vagina! Nope, 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 nope. Do you think that's funny, butthead? Let me tell you how gaming was for a non-English speaking person with no access to the internet. We used to play with dictionaries by our side and translate things on the go. But this puzzle was always way too complex to simply translate a few words and get it right. It involves the order of the Ashford family, and you have to read files, visual clues and examine items to solve it. It's pretty easy for me now and I won't spoil for people who actually want to solve it themselves, but because I remember these kinds of struggles when I come across it, this puzzle will always have a special place in my heart. There's nothing much to do here, there's this weird puzzle with the music box, but we can't solve it right now, so we grab the key and keep exploring the palace. Chiramo. There's this file written by Hunk, yes, THE Hunk, telling he brought a mysterious package to this island. It's a frozen BOW and we'll see it really soon, and also that he trained on this facility. This island was used to train soldiers and to collect battle data from the BOWs, and that's why things were way too automated in the training facility, it was supposed to be like that. Now that I have a second plate, I can go back to the prison and give Rodrigo his medicine. Oh, here's the part I told ya, now we can grab those items. And since the shutters are down, there's no zombies here. The B.O.W. gas rounds, I think these are the only ones in the entire game. But why so rare? Because they cut an enemy's HP by half. Even bosses, especially bosses, even the last boss, I used them before that. I'll show you where I use them and you see if you agree with me or not. Just don't use them on regular enemies, okay? Now we take a trip to Alfred's Torture Dungeon. This part is more of a novelty. If you take your time to imagine the things that were done in this place, the visual clues of a person sitting here sipping wine, watching people suffer and laughing as stated in some documents. The guy who created this place is a doctor who admits being a psycho and thankful for Alfred taking a like on him. Another cool thing is that the key to this place is the Dr. Glass Eye, because this was supposed to be a secret between him and Alfred. I don't want to be surprised if this guy removed his perfect working eye just to have a safe place to carry this precious key. Yeah, that's the kind of people we're dealing here. See, I'm out of bowgun arrows, but I have a lot of 9mm rounds now. So don't worry, just don't waste strong ammunition on weak stuff and weak ammunition on strong stuff and you'll be fine. What are you doing here? Hemostatic medicine. How kind of you. Thanks. Keep it. It was a gift from my brother, but... Thanks. Here, let me give you this in return. You might need it later on. Now go. Don't worry about me. Oh, a lockpick just in time. Bowgun powder. Nice, but you know what's nicer? This, but what does this gun do? This. That's what makes this weapon so cool. Not only you can shoot on the usual free burst mode, you can also control your shots way more. Beautiful. Now it's time to get out of Rockford Island. We make a quick stop to the Ashford's residence. Claire Redfield, hold it right there. I am Alexia Ashford. For the pride of the Ashford family, I will kill you. What's going on? Oh, Steve! After her! This must be... What? No! Wait a second. What just happened? What do you mean, what happened? What are you, blind? So there never was an Alexia after all. You mean, he thinks he's two people? Okay, that's it. 
Let's get out of here. The self-destruct system has been That freak! Activated. He's trying to blow us up along All with the entire now. facility. What do you expect? You didn't kill him. Since there's only one place to go now, I'll well, escape to that. Now feel my revenge! <laughs> Yes, a tyrant. That's what our boy Hunk brought here. So grab everything you need and move out. And before you save, push these boxes. If you die on the boss, you don't have to push him again. <laughs> that ass is looking tight. All the respect to Miss Heart Shaped Ass right here, but this one takes the cake. You see what I did? I Cake, cake. Why people watch this fucking channel anyway? Okay, on a serious note, just hit him with something powerful. I usually have a lot of grenade rounds because they're too close quarters to use on Bender Snatchers, so I kill the Tyrant with that. You can use explosive arrows as well, but I don't recommend using your anti BOW rounds yet. That fish. That fish is dying. Took you so long. I was starting to get worried. No time to explain. Let's, Let's go. Right. We're out of here. Time to say goodbye to this death trap. Oh. You made it! Yahoo! Ugh, it's finally over! Dude, she gives you fuck me eyes and you're like, I'm sorry, and start sobbing. Okay, in Steve's defense, this was the beginning of facial expression in video games. This could be anything eyes. It could be I'm hungry eyes. It could be I'm tired eyes. It could be how can a 17 years old fly a fucking plane eyes. I'm sorry. I know I caused a lot of trouble for you. That's why they gave him the emo hair on called Veronica X. Yes, they changed his hair to look less like Leonardo DiCaprio. <laughs> Oh, there you go. This is the Resident Evil with most changed stuff between versions, I think. Code Veronica and Code Veronica X have different cutscenes. We already missed one since we're playing the original. It's just Wesker beating up Claire while you keep your volume down so your neighbors don't think you're watching porn. I'm coming. Okay, I'll change the sounds for people watching without headphones. I'm a ghost. Coming back to haunt your dear brother. Wesker? I don't know what went on between you two, but you have them all wrong. My brother is not the kind of person you think he is. I despise Chris. What are you gonna do to him? What? What is it? Stay there. I'm coming. <laughs> I'll show you some of the other cutscenes and differences between the NTSC and PAL versions later, okay? The cargo room patch is open! I'll go back and check it out! This boss. This boss. I love it. I hate it. My strategy is to kill him as fast as possible. Here's where I use my anti-BOW rounds. Yes! He's that scary. You have to deplete his health until you can activate this box and send him flying away. Does this look familiar to you? When he starts bleeding, he's good to go. But I don't even see the motherfucker. Three anti-BOW rounds. And after that, two acid rounds will do the job. Perhaps three flame rounds though some bots, I don't know. Oh, you sneaky bastard. After dealing with the boss, the autopilot takes control and starts flying towards the Antarctic. And Steve sees this as the perfect opportunity to get closer to Claire. While she's sleeping. What the fuck was Capcom thinking with this character? Let alone this scene in its entirety. Antarctic. Don't we need more clothes? No, 2000s fashion was hot enough. Were all these a thing back then? Yes. Included the choker? Especially the choker. Here we have something of a problem. The moths. Now the moths are just an inconvenience for me, but seriously, the first time I played this I wanted to bang my head against the wall because of the moths. This corridor links the safe room and two important areas you have to move back and forth. So the moths, what's the deal with them? They put this 
eggs on your back, they will stay there until they decide to screw with you. And this can happen at any time. They also can poison you. And although blue herbs are abundant, and you have a pot with several uses at the very corridor the moths are, you don't want to get poisoned in this game. That's fine and then the moths schluffs, they die quick, stop bitching. No, they respawn every single time you enter this godforsaken room and i have a personal peeve with them because i see survival horror games as a huge puzzle that presents itself in this form where you walk around and figure out what to do and since there's no time limit there's no sense of rush so you should be punished in other ways for fooling around and code veronica does this amazing job at punishing you for revisiting rooms that you shouldn't oh you forgot something are you lost here's some enemies so you pay more attention next time i'm all in for responding enemies on these kind of situations because it makes you think if you really want to go back to that room just to grab some herbs but the moths still punish you for every time you enter that corridor there's simply no way of avoiding it if you think i'm exaggerating just try dealing with these guys so on this part i like having a little fun to keep things less stressful in the antarctic there are no bender snatchers you'll be dealing with basic enemies so i save some ammo to give chris a head start but how do i save ammo check this out Lockpick this safe. Go to the room that says BOW. Kill the spiders. Grab the ammo. Grab the barcode. Put a code on a crate. Don't ask. Go to the room that says weapon. Ho 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 pa! Grab this thing and put it here. Grab the mining key and go there. Examine this stupid valve. Go to the other door. Pat the dogs. Turn on the power. Activate the conveyor belt. Send the magnet to the weapons room. Leave it there. You can have it now. Go to the BOW room. Grab the mask. Was this a thing back then? Yes. Go to the safe room. Push this bookshelf. Press this button. See our boy the IG. See our boy Nosferatu. Was this a thing back then? Yes. Grab the pot. Go upstairs. Use the key. Grab the handle. Oh no! Ah! It's all my fault! Yes. Change the handle. Go to the mining room and that's it. That's as fast I can do this with less moth interaction as possible. <sighs> We're safe now. It's in the game, Claire. I shall enjoy watching you shriek in agony. Not this time! You gay! Two choices, do not touch this rifle for now, I know it's tempting. Claire, what are you doing? Let's go! You see, you play as two characters in this game, Claire and Chris, and now it's Claire Scenario's last boss, aside from one little inconvenience later, so the weapons you take to this fight are gone until almost the end of the game. I hated this so much on my first playthrough, I knew you changed characters but I didn't remember when, so I lost the grenade launcher when I killed Nosferatu. And you ask me why did I just load? I was so pissed, I dealt with the rest of the game without the grenade launcher because I refused to load the game when I did nothing wrong, and this angered me so much. I kill him with the knife now. Okay, let's go! Can kill this boss with well placed rifle shots, but it's hard for first timers. No wonder Alfred couldn't hit shit with this. If you have to take a weapon with you, take the bowgun. Chris's enemies are faster because he deals with hunters, and you can take the bowgun back later to use on the last boss. Some people are probably pissed because I told you to lose the bowgun, but it's a harder weapon to use for beginners, and ammo on the second part is more scarce. Yeah, believe me, this is harder than it looks. Okay, let's go! Okay, let's go! 
ring out. Okay, let's go. Because you have to hit him with a certain distance between you two, but it's really hard to see. Anyone that play fighting games probably notice an extra piece of information, the shadows. I use them to position myself better and hit more precisely. If you hit Nosferatu in an odd angle, he bleeds this purple gas. You see, this was Alexander, the Ashford twin's father. They injected their own father with the Tiberonica virus and he turned into this creature. Another interesting fact about this purple gas substance is that if you get poison here, you can't cure it with a blue herb. You gotta find an antidote. But do not worry about that. This will add like two minutes to Chris's playthrough. Oh yeah, and you get this extra cutscene if you kill him with the knife. Got you now. Ain't gonna let you rob me again, motherfucker. Are you all right? Claire! You're alive! We did it! We're finally out! <laughs> Look! There's a snowmobile over there! I won't forget about this, Claire. <sighs> Alexa did on herself the same experiment she did on her father, but she was kept in a very low temperature for 15 years, so her cells could evolve slowly, and the virus, you know, wouldn't get out of hand. Uh, Alexia, you're finally awake. Uh, Alexia. up on a lead given to me by Leon has brought me here. Now it's time for Code Veronica's Ace in the Hole, something that was so perfectly done that it ended up leaving little to no room for adjustments, so it was never done again. This game, hands down, has the most coherent scenarios A and B on any other classic Resident Evil. On the main series, up to this point, you could play through the game twice, from two different perspectives. And although these were somewhat different, especially in Resident Evil 2, Code Veronica says, fuck it. You play through the game twice, but now things will stick together way more naturally. Puzzles, items, interactions, almost everything you do in one game will impact the other where it's scripted to do so or it's up to you to meet those requirements. Enemies, routes and objectives are completely different. You may say it's not really two scenarios since you play the game always on the same order and it's easy to be organized that way, but the formula is the same, two characters going through the same places. Oh, and don't lie to me, you always play Resident Evil 2 on the same order. No one starts with Claire. Okay, I do, I love you, Claire. I was taking my time with this review, so I stalled a lot and did not rush things through. Until now, you've seen four and a half hours of gameplay, and there's three and a half left. Here's some perspective. In Resident Evil 2 and 3, to achieve the highest rank, you have to beat the game in under two and a half hours. This requirement in Code Veronica is four and a half. So if you're going back to Rockford Island, how different can things be? We arrived there after the self-destruct sequence was completed, so there's no island, right? No. Thankfully, it was a dot. Didn't even kill a fish. God damn it. Have you seen anyone named Claire Redfield? Did you just say... Claire? You know who she is, don't you? I helped her escape. Everyone's gone. I may be the only other person left. Go on. Follow your sister and get off this island. I guess I gotta save Rodrigo. For this boss, just do something strong and keep moving. I don't know why, but this one is always messy for me. <laughs> He's still alive. Must be his famous Latin stamina. Hold on! Don't give up! She gave this to me as a token of thanks for saving her. Here we have the graves of the people who used to live on this island. It says Robert and Maria Raval. So Rodrigo came here to die with his family. Fuck. 
Don't forget to grab the sub machine guns here. At this point, I don't use this percentage weapons anymore uh, since I have so much ammo, but they are a breath of fresh air if you're going for a slower time or to first play through and not for other tucker guns. I honestly just put them in the item box. I'll use the Glock for this video just so you can see it in action, but I leave the M93R for Chris as well because I just enjoy that weapon so much. About those European differences. On every version, they scratched everything that linked the Ash Force to Nazis from changing their names from Hilda and Hubert Kruger to Alexa and Alfred Ashford. But some of this stuff is kinda in the game, like those look that I showed you years ago. There's documents giving a lot of spotlights to the butler of the family, implying that even Alfred feared him. Why is a psychopath afraid of a butler, especially when he treats his employees with so much disdain? Because originally he was an ex-Nazi officer. Why am I talking about all this now? Because the European version changed even more stuff, going as far as to change this tank model from the Tiger 1 to a Nemo Abrams. The spiders. Oh no. Funny how we see what we need to do to open this door. Now we just have to find it. Where did I put that plate? Alexia? No. She's already fully awake. Chris, you're here? Chris, I'm sending some company to keep you entertained. <laughs> They're hiding Wesker's face like we didn't see in the title screen or in the intro movie. Here's a puzzle that changes your route depending if the shotgun is on or off this panel. Because of all this shenanigans, I won't use it. But I'll use it on the Antarctic. By then, I have a lot of ammunition for it, and its close quarters are more suited to its use anyway. I'm really bad at avoiding this thing, so I just trigger them and deal with the hunters. I'm pretty sure most of these won't respawn. If they did, I would make an extra effort to avoid them. Oh, and grab the side pack on the burning building. Yeah, we have to grab those hexagon shaped proofs and put them here, and they're exactly where Claire left them. Some items changed, but thankfully those things are still there. Wesker? He's still alive? I came for Alexia. You attacked the island! And my sister! No idea how much I hate you. <laughs> Alexia? By this point, I'm not even grabbing plants anymore. I'll show you another saver. I grab almost all of them. And you'll see, it's totally unnecessary to grab them all. I'm not a herbs specialist, okay? But you won't see me combining free herbs. I never do that. Herbs heal a certain amount of health. How much exactly? I don't know. You have fine, caution, orange caution, and danger. But these are actually a value, not the amount of hits you can take. That's why sometimes a zombie bites you and you still are fine. One green herb heals a certain amount. Two green herbs heal more than one herb. Three herbs is a fully heal, as well as a green mixed with a red and blue cures poison. The problem is, some enemies can kill while you are on orange caution, before you even reach danger status, so I never let my character go into danger. This means if I use a mix of three herbs on an orange caution situation, I'm actually wasting its precious healing potential. There's a lot of healing items on this game, but I suggest being at least a bit aware of what you're doing, so you don't run out. Yeah, I know these backgrounds were a novelty when it came out, but they didn't age well when compared to other entries in the series. They just feel lifeless and bland and lacking in detail, and more importantly, visual storytelling. Oh, these are the sweepers. They're hunters, but faster. And like that wasn't enough. Get you poison when they hit you. Just don't play around with these guys. I think they're the most dangerous enemies in this game. I usually kill them with one acid round. And speaking of corrosive agents, we need to mix two chemicals, Clement Alpha and Sigma, to use on a plate that I didn't even retrieve yet. Due to the lethal nature of the new BOW, we cannot be too careful in closing dyslexia. One of the chemicals is at this lab, just in pool 228 Fahrenheit. Dyslexia. Because I don't want you taking a trip back to Rockford for Anne's room just to find out which date this godforsaken place was finished. And the other one is at the training facility. That party play is Steve. Remember? Grab the other one and the parts for the Glock. What does this upgrade do? I don't know. Let's grab the plate now. 
Oh no! The giant albanoid. Oh no! I don't see why it wastes your time and ammo on it. It looks pretty happy what it is anyway. Now just combine everything and let's get out of here. The Antarctic was flooded when Claire and Steve quote-unquote escaped, so half of the map is gone, right? Yes, but there's an interesting part that now is accessible. Deja vu. There's a small copy of this transformation. <laughs> I told you not to leave this distinguisher behind, did I? Just take a look at this! Okay, it's not that good of a magnum, but it's useful. Oh yeah, if you got poisoned during the Nosferatu fight, here is where you have to come back to grab the... I think it's a serum, I don't remember, it's just a, a small pack of something. Oh, yeah. Who could have done this? <laughs> That is how I dispose of insignificant bugs, said the spider to the fly. How do you wish to die? Why all this hate for her father? Because they found out they were lab experiments. Alexa is a clone of Veronica, the person who put the Ashford family on the map. What about Alfred? He wasn't planned and just show up the birth. The giant spider! By this point, you know what's up. I think that's why in Resident Evil 4 they locked me up with the bosses. Since I'm not going over every item I use and consequentially this card, you won't notice a lack of keys that open several doors, which I think contributes to people being lost and running like headless chickens on their first playthrough. <laughs> Get out of here. Not yet. We have to find Steve. Who's Steve? Yeah, how the fuck Steve? Oh, there's an extra cutscene if you get poisoned against Nosferatu, which is... Feeling better? Thanks to you. Just like a big brother, huh? You're always looking out for your little sister. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> it's Alexia! Alexia? There really is an Alexia? <laughs> it is almost time, you genetically inferior siblings. <laughs> Chris! Uh. No! Just go. I'll be fine. Ugh. Now, be careful what you bring here with Claire, because you won't see those items ever again. I wonder what happened if I... Oh, that's a lot of damage! Okay. Here's Monster Steve. One hit, danger. Always come here with a full health and bring at least one full heal, okay? There are ways of escaping this and hurt, but on your first playthrough, just tank the hits. Steve. I'm glad that I met you. I... I love you. 
seriously? There's a reason why this lovely creature is in this game. The original idea was supposed to be Leo in Code Veronica, but apparently Capcom felt he was too popular to die, and they put Steve on his place. I feel they made Steve the worst character possible so no one will miss him and get mad at Capcom for killing him off. Oh god damn it! <laughs> At last, I found you, Alexia. Oh, here's one of the cutscenes I told you about. The one in Code Veronica X has more action. Wesker, Chris. Oh, those are the fuck me eyes. Since you're one of my best men, I'll let you. But I prefer the original one simply because it establishes Alexia's power even more. Chris is a big guy, even on this game he was strong, but his offense did little to nothing to Wesker, and now Alexia is making a short work of him. Whoa! Oh! 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 Whoa, what power! That makes more sense why Wesker was so scared to find out that she was already awake, and the reason why his contractors want her sample of the virus so bad. <laughs> okay, it doesn't help that she dies so quickly, but at least there's a nice nod to the original Mr. X. <laughs> Even the monster boss has to moan. I'll get more into that when I eventually do a video on Resident Evil 3, but seriously. I think more puzzles were supposed to be connected. You take the plate from the blue box to the red and then from red to blue. You take the wings of the dragonfly and then you have to put them back. But I think having all items waiting for you where Claire used them was just too silly. <laughs> Claire? Is that you, Claire? Steve! <laughs> You might think she's overreacting, but consider here, she came pretty much unscathed from Raccoon City. Leon was the one who lost someone. Ada! I love you. Now it's time to get the hell out of here. Hell yeah. Grab your best weapons, put the code. You know, the one. Oh, Alexa wants a rematch and decided it's a good idea to mess with the sister of the guy holding a fucking magnet. <laughs> You can't fly a plane, if I'm dying, you're dying too. And for this final part, I just aim up and shoot and let her do the rest. There's a lot more to do in Code Veronica, but I have to call it a day somewhere. It's well documented that this game was supposed to be Resident Evil 3, but then Sony made an offer to Capcom for them to publish a game that was part of the main series on their console at the time, the PlayStation. So the spin-off became Resident Evil 3, and Resident Evil 3 became the spin-off. That's why Joe's whereabouts in Resident Evil 3 are not important to this one and vice versa. I'm not going to pretend that I know everything about this series, sometimes they acknowledge this game, sometimes they don't. Hell, they even mention Gun Survivor from time to time, so I don't know what's canon or not. Chris! Hey, you know that I always keep my promises. <laughs> <laughs> Get on the fucking plane, Chris. Talking to my friends, I was surprised by how many of them played all the Resident Evil titles, but never such as Code Veronica. This game has an interesting choice of weapons, characters, puzzles, and themes, and even an intelligent rat that thankfully escapes with Wesker. Code Veronica is a very unique entry on the Resident Evil series, and I think people should give it a chance and see what it did right and wrong, and decide if they like it or not. As simple as that. Thanks for watching.